Hello. Today, I have a third extract from logbooks of Pat Eady, a coaster that flew high. Now, Pat's home was located on two acres of the Joyce estate on the outskirts of Greymouth, which enabled Jack, his dad, an avid amateur radio enthusiast with the call sign ZL3KZ, to build large radio aerials. But I digress. Here's another story. We grew up at a distance in the same school, although he managed to sustain a comfortable three years difference. And this is about Larry Zambezi. His violin playing fell beside the way, leaving me ahead in that aspect. Studying the classics, Larry launched himself into a world of his own, although forever wanting his colleagues to have him mix with them. Larry couldn't hack mediocrity. His aged Italian father, a non-English speaking, petite Italian mother, had brought up a large family where the Italian culture, its language, and the Roman Catholic Church were to be observed in that order. Whereas kids cycling to school would whistle the latest hit song, Larry would be singing in a voice that overcame the wind part of the creed in Gregorian chant. Yes, he was certainly different. In our school days, we lived in the same part of town. And although our families knew each other well, we never socialized, in part due to Mrs. Zambezi needing one of her children as an interpreter. Larry's father, a stonemason, shared his skills with our neighbor making intricate stone walls around at my parents' home. Larry left school to enter the priesthood at Tuakau. It seemed no time before he was back in town frequenting the would-be aviators' retreat at the Aero Club. The priesthood vocation had not worked out. The year was 1957. Sitting in a crowded residence lounge in the Leo Frick Hotel at 21.30, the very distinctive, high-pitched vocal tones of none other than Larry Zambezi were cutting through the usual humdrum of noise. He was night-stopping Coventry, in the same hotel that we, as British European Airways crew, were night-stopping. Now working for Air Lingus as a co-pilot on DC-3s, the very same position I held with BEA. All his past history was told as disconnected anecdotes. Dating back to that time, he told me about going under rather than over the electric cables near Dobson in New Zealand. He was in the process of applying for the Beda College in Rome. Due to the 1956 crisis, boat sailings through the Suez Canal had been stopped. It transpired that Larry had left school to join the Marist Fathers at Tua but had been thrown out as unsuitable. Now, I'm looking forward to reading many more of these stories. I'll be back next Thursday. Cheerio.